welcome to Law of Academia. Today we're going to talk about what you get as a level six bard. Oh, and I'll tell you right now, you finally have the right to be called a human being or a person. Yes. See, this is when bard becomes extremely powerful and we will go over why when those mainly two archetypes come into play. Some other ones can make it even more powerful as well. Now, the first ability that we're going to talk about for a bard is armor. I know it should be under this section of E, but eh, armor should be talked about first. So armor is where you spend two points of six level magic to gain a point of worn armor. This means that I can technically stack it with my second level armor, so I can wear up to two points of armor. And this is kind of a lifestyle choice. I usually just take the two points from sixth level and save those four points at second level, so then I, I have options. I can, I can use those four points on low level magic, like experience, short swords, shoves, and I can actually, I can actually then use those magic at higher tiers, and I can, I, I have. I have options now, oh, it's, and I mean I get more points at 6th at level, I'll be able to have two more to do whatever I want with because you'll need two other ones if you're going to wear armor anyway, we'll talk about that soon, but you, you have options now? This is amazing, and I could choose if I want to give up more of those op options to get more armor. The reason why I only ever take one armor and usually get it from 6th level magic is, well, the reasons I stated before, that it's nice to have extra points and options, but also... Also, because if I have two points of armor, oh, I'm hit with an arrow. I'll probably only mend back one point. I won't mend back two. And while theoretically, it can save you from two normal shots, and it is so much nicer to have that little cushion of error, you have swift. You have other abilities if you need to, to cast, and you have songs. There should be enough things that you can do with your next ability that we'll talk about, where you don't need two points of armor, and one point of armor is one point of invul. A fireball hits your armor, doesn't matter if you have two points. An arrow hits your armor, doesn't matter if you have two points. Armor breaking hits your armor, doesn't matter if you have two points. You just need one. And um, the only time one po or two points of armor really matters is if you're in the fray of melee, and uh, you have two points when they don't have armor breaking or anything special, which, yes, does happen, and it's nice, and it's up to you to decide if you want to stack these two, which is why second level armor is still blue. And it kind of goes down to green or orange at this stage, but two points of armor is really good. And as we've talked about, armor is essential as a bard, unless you take one variant at level six. But this is how you've been playing bard up till now. Why change, right? Very next ability. It is combat caster. Now, Combat caster is awesome. Let me show you what it kind of does. Warrior in purple, I command the loss, I command the loss, I command the loss. Annoying wizard casting at me. I command the express. I sing my quadrant one of less. Dark clouds and thunderstorms. Now, if you'll notice, I didn't open my hand with my shield. No. No, I used it to block while I was going. Actually, if I want, I could fight with this, which I've done. The great way to use it is when fighting, you say, I make someone again, make someone again, make someone again, make someone again, make this item whole again. They hit your leg because, of course, they're going to. You have it mended, and then you probably get a free arm shot because they're bending over to hit. So you just pop, 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 pop on that arm. Just pop, 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 pop. And then you get a few extra shots on them for free as you've already got a man going. If you're fighting in the middle of combat, oh, someone hits my back, switch, I make this one again. I make, and then you keep going. Or if you want to get your song back, you're singing a song of survival, so it makes someone again. I sing my name is called. And it is awesome. In fact, it's so awesome that everything in Bard works with Combat Caster. It makes everything work, and it's all designed around Combat Caster. The idea that you have low frequency spells, that they're per refreshes, it works because you are meant to be a caster who goes out there, mainly fights, is able to cast a little bit while fighting, not nearly as much as the other casting classes because that would be overpowered, but you're able to still cast, you're still able to have options, and you are able to fight. You are able to song hop. What do I mean by song hop? Let's say there's a person with Entangle over there and a warrior with three points of armor who doesn't have Ancestral. You can go up, you can say, I think I'm going to stop clouds in, and then you go and you threaten that that wizard or druid or whatever healer and they get scared and they panic and they, go, ah! they just throw the entangle bolt at you you take it you say, and then you say i think i'm a numerous calls and then you go and then you just keep going and you don't need to stop you don't have to do this awkward switchy switch open-handed what 
it doesn't really work if you don't have combat caster. Everything in Bard, all the way up to level 5, and even kind of at level 6, has all revolved around this ability. This is why Bard has been pretty much garbage, well part of the reason, is because it's been pretty much garbage up until now, is because it only comes together and works with combat caster. And it's two points I know, but it's it's a neutral ability, it's not an archetype, we don't have three archetypes, we have two, that is so necessary in order to play that it makes that bard have a good power spike at six level where you can technically song hop in between songs where you can do just what I showed you, whereas you can sing Song of Freedom, you can sing uh, Song of Survival if you think that you're going to be able to be stronger than him, but there's, there's a, a bunch of other people, Song of Survival is usually a good go-to, and it just allows you to play your class. You're able to then go after people and say, wizard, wizard to my left, I come in these press. And then you keep going and you can do this while fighting. A wizard's casting at you. You're fighting someone else. You can say, wizard casting at me to my left, I come in these press. And then you, and then you go and you're doing that. See how my little finger pointed while I'm doing this? You can do so many cool things with combat caster. And it is essential to play a bard up to, well, what we've been doing up until this point, all the way to level six. This is what makes bards. This is their class identity. Other classes have spell balls and verbals offensively. They have heals and resurrects. Others have enchantments. We don't get any of that until level six. So this is why combat caster is so good. It allows you to actually play the game and play your class as it's designed. The fact that you had to wait to level six is questionable. In all honesty, it should be a Level one ability for one point. We'll go over why in our next video, next week, not the song video. And so stay tuned for that. But Combat Caster is so necessary. It honestly hurts me a little bit. I don't know why that the Bard Kit was designed around this one ability and you don't get it until level six. Now, you have Dervish. It's an archetype that, I know, something's different. My armor is gone. Ah! It makes you able to play Bard differently. You can be an actual caster. With drawbacks, of course, but it's, it's actually a neat option. Now, the reason why I'm not wearing armor is because Dervish doubles my equipment cost. So if I were to get Dervish in my 6th level armor, well, I have no 6th level magic, aside from being Dervish. And if I were able to get it at 2nd level, that would be a mere eight points for armor. Ah! Oh, I mean, this kind of takes care of the problem with bards being strapped for points, but it, ah, oh, eight points? That, that's too much. You take a short sword, a single short sword, that's four points. You take a single medium shield, that's six points of fifth level magic. <laughs> so you really don't want to take equipment in order to maximize dervish. You want to go out there with a dagger and, well, I mean, if you want, if you're like me, you could take a jug. This cannot actually block unless you have certain games that allow it, which I've had. But it can't block normally. I can point at a person with a jug. This is counting as a free hand because I'm not wielding anything. So I can just go out there with my little jug and dagger. Now, Combat Caster had this cool thing, the song hop. It's where you're able to counter anyone. Someone goes to cast a spell at you that's going to freeze you. You could sing, I think I'm going to roll this. Dark clouds and thun as you go out and murder them. You see someone with armor, I sing in my legendary press. And then you go for armor breaking. You could just song hop. You could go in between anything you want. You could song the song, swap the song of survival. You could cast and then go. It's a really cool idea. But it's best 1v1. Here's the reason why. Most of the bard spells, like awe and loss, those per lives, and well, pretty much everything, is meant to peel people away. You shove a person away. You awe a person away. Now it's 1v1, let's go. And the reason why is because for songs, they're best 1v1. In fact, bard is the best 1v1 class in the game. Why? Bard can 1v1 say no. They can say to someone who's going to kill them as a martial class, no, I don't die. They can say to a caster, no, you don't affect me. You're trying to do something? No, I'm immune to anything that you try to do because I'm awesome, especially with the song that I get at this level. You are able to counter anyone 1v1. It is great, it is awesome. The problem is when you start adding people. When you start adding people to the normal 
to face a normal bard. You can't counter two ice balls. Yeah, you can counter those, but you can't counter the two ice balls along with an assassin who has poison and wounds kill, along with the archer shooting you at your back, along with the warrior casting insult at you. You cannot counter all of these at once. And songs are preventative. They are meant to have a lot of skill in order to prevent something from being cast at you. They are one line so that they're counter casting. So that if someone is about to do something, you can say Sigma Quadralis and then go because it's very quick. When you add more people to this equation, Bard becomes exponentially worse as a combat Bard. Now, on the flip side of that, we have Dervish. Why I went into all that is because Dervish allows you to work on a giant field and the more people you face, generally, the better it becomes. Why is this? Well, Dervish doesn't just double the cost of equipment. Dervish doubles the verbals taken. So if I take an Empower, for example, as one per two, like I spend one point and I get two per refresh, I spend one point and I get four per refresh. I spend one point on shove, I get two shoves. And what's even nicer is that we don't have any spell balls. We don't need any of those. So if you are spending points on things that are not equipment, which we're already not going to, and uh, anything aside from songs, it's, it's, going, it's going to be verbals. You, if you don't have equipment and you've already purchased your songs, all you have left is verbals. Let's say you go heavy into songs and pick five songs. You pick Dervish, that's seven points. Wow, you now have 23 points that are doubled. Ooh, I know, this sounds great. And it is because you have the frequency problem solved, as long as you actually go with per lives and don't just take all per refreshes. Even then though, it helps a lot. You're able to have more per refreshes than anyone in the game, really, if you start doing it by putting everything into per refreshes and you just, you have options, which is wonderful. Now, what I like to do as a dervish is I like to have about 20 per lives, ah, shove and loss primarily, maybe an insult or two, which means two to four insults, just to make sure I am able to affect the enemy. And I have 20 per lives at that point. I, I do run out of them because I cast them a lot, but at the same point, you won't run out of them quickly. You'll be able to be a real caster. It's awesome. You're able to cast more spells on a wizard or just about anyone else per life. It's so great. The problem is that you're not very versatile as a bard for your spells. See, we have shove as a per life. That's sorcery. That's great. It's not the most amazing ability in the world, but it's a first level. It's great. It's wonderful. It's sorcery. Third level, you have awe, which is command. Fifth level, you have lost, which is command. Also, at first level, you have insult, which is command. You're starting to see the pattern here. Basically, all your spells are command. You have more spells than most people, but you're not you're not as specialized and diverse as them. In addition to that, your spells are really meant to annoy people. So what you want to do with your spells is find the maximum way to annoy everyone. If you see a warrior in armor, well, in plate mail especially, well, warrior, I have eight loss, and four of them are directed at you, my friend, because that makes it so that you will have to walk all the way back to base. And it really sucks, doesn't it? I know. You can get to the point where literally you shift to a side of the field and without casting a spell, people start, half the people start moving to the other side because they don't want to deal with you. You're so annoying. And that is why Dervish is awesome. We'll go into some of the things that you can do with it later, but it allows you to utilize songs like Song of Deflection, some of the things that you wouldn't normally utilize. So Dervish is... An amazing option. It's literally the flip side to Bard, where Bard is amazing 1v1, but terrible with multiple people. This, well, you could spend 20 spells on one person, but since they're more just about slightly moving them around, it doesn't really do anything. But when you apply it to a large battlefield, you're able to affect just about everyone, annoy so many people, and we can go into ways to make you even more annoying. Did I say we'll make you more annoying? Well, this, your, your second archetype, since you only have two, really, really makes you annoying. Legend is a wonderful archetype that I always take with Dervish. And most people, when it came out or when they try Bard, they think, oh, Legend's not that great because what does it do? Well, it takes away the ability to use Swift. That's, that's already a bit of an issue, but what does it do? It doubles our extensions that are purchased. So if I purchase two extensions, which is the max I can purchase, then I have four per life. 
it seems like not the best trade-off at first. But when you consider what a dervish is and that your job is to annoy the ever-loving crap out of the enemy team, not be malicious like a wizard. You don't want to actually be like, hey, you, I don't care what you want. You're going to suffer. Now that, that's a wizard. You're just like, hey, I want to annoy you, friend. So legend makes it so that you can do this. In fact, it can make the whole team hate you to the point where they will suicide to come after you. I may be speaking of experience. Now, how you do this is... You pick a far out target that's in the middle of charging something or that has a long spell, ideally healers, and you extension shove or extension, if you're a decent bit away from base, lost. So you make it so that the healer, uh, shove is actually preferable because if you do it to the healer, ugh, they have to move back 20 feet. Agoraphobia, generally people get out of the way. Healers are at the edge of base. They just run out whatever it's not that big of a deal lost usually they're close to base insult can be interesting but it they're usually by so many people with release that's why extension shove is amazing so you extension shove them as they're doing their charge they go back and you can just sit there pretend you're doing it doing on someone else you have like 30 of them anyway who cares if you're dervish and then you go back to the healer and you extension shove them Ugh, as they go backwards you do this two more times and then you repeat this consistently when you come back to life or when you get a bar to restore you so you have infinite of this uh, then then you make it so that the enemy healer just says i can't resurrect anyone we're losing because of this kill that stupid bard and everyone starts to get annoyed because you've made them an awe you made them lost before you made them walk around it's not even anything to kill them no we've done something worse we have annoyed them to the point where they all want to kill us to where if you are a step out of line on the battlefield to get that extension you will see seven people rush at you you get your extension off you take a step back behind a shield wall and then they all just kill these people who are not even focused on their own defense or killing people in front of them they just have hate in their eyes at you because of how ever loving annoying you are and yes legend is this good it allows you to do this and give you more tools to annoy people so you're not causing any true harm you're just annoying people so much that they want to kill you over that wizard who's actually been killing them it's quite hilarious so legend is a very good purchase option if you take it with dervish if you don't have dervish don't take it you need swift you need swift if you're going to combat cast with armor you need it so bad so dervish is a well, Dervish is the only way to take Legend. Legend is kind of mutually exclusive with Dervish, but if you do take it, oh, oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Now, I know we've been praising a lot of level six because level six is awesome. It allows you to play your class, but, but there, there's not a very good ability at level six. And this is Silver Tongue. Now it seems really cool at first. You give any class the ability to have swift and while it takes away their other uses of swift it's chargeable so you can be like hey you want to swift something oh that's really cool i can give this to you and you like it yeah it, problem no one really likes silver tongue no one really likes it because <laughs> healers hey it's chargeable bards it, it takes away a song slot they need a tune with that to make it worth it at Mm, no, no, Swift is not worth it in that instance. So then, well, Silver Tongue Swift at least. So then you go into the other classes, and as you start to look at them, you realize this this does a whole lot of nothing, really. I mean, I could put Silver Tongue on a scout so they have a Swift heal, but um, this really does nothing overall. And you have Infinite Swift because it's chargeable. Well, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it, it, when you look at it and you put it into realistic perspective of how useful this ability is, it's not. It's not very useful. People have tried to make this useful. People have consistently looked at it and said, oh, that's a cool spell, and they've tried to, which is why it's red, because people try it a lot, but it doesn't it doesn't do what they want. It doesn't actually have a place in the game. It's not good. And I would highly recommend not to take Silver Tongue. Now, your song for 6th level, of course you get a song at 6th level, is Song of Interference. Now, Song of Interference, well, you, you think of monks. You think of how they're enlightened and with their nice little robes and everything else. Well, you can pretend to be that as well. You can say, 
I sing it our magic thwarted. You can pretend to be enlightened since it gives you enlightened soul. Now, this is actually a good option. It makes you immune to verbals greater than touch. And it works with all the other songs. I mean, we have Song of Freedom, extremely powerful. We have Song of Power, extremely powerful. There's a whole bunch of other songs that work and you can flip flop between songs, it's great. The only problem with Song of Interference is that it is charge times five. Now, every other song has been limited. So why is this charge times five? Good question. They, th they probably thought that, oh, this is so powerful. Yeah, it kind of is, but it's not the song that you sing in every situation. Song of Survival is actually more widely applicable. And other songs being unlimited, but having this one not means that most bards don't take it because they don't want to do a charge times five. That's stupid. I understand, yes, it is powerful. That's why it's level six, but to make it charge times five is just really dumb, especially when it kind of is counterintuitive and goes against all the other mechanics of every other song. That's why bards don't take it very often. I do, because I like it. I understand it's powerful and I can charge it. But at the same time, actually taking it and using it, it's most bards choose not to because of just the hassle that it is. And because of that, it's green. It is so powerful. It's so good. It's just, it doesn't make sense for it to be charged times five at all. That's the reason why it's level six. Now, for your last ability at level six, we have stun. Stun is... It's pretty awesome. It's sorcery, so it works on yes, takes care of our command issue. And stun it makes it so that the person is able to do, unable to do anything and can be affected by anyone. Now you might think at first glance, oh, six level per refresh, yeah, stuns, it's nice, but I mean, I might only want to take one, maybe two, but that's a lot of points. Eh, it's not worth it. However, my friends, we have a fun archetype called Dervish. Dervish doubles the purchase options of all verbals. Now, stun is of course a verbal. It's not equipment and it's not a song, so it's pretty much verbal. With only a few other enchantments, it's, it's, it's pretty obvious what it's going to be. And because of this, stun is double for each point you put into it. Now you may think, well, oh, that doesn't mean a lot. I mean, I could put, wait, and you think about this. I put four points into it, I have eight stuns per refresh. And of course that's with Look the Part, but even if you don't have looked apart, you could still have six stuns per refresh. Healers, if they spend all their points, can get six stuns per refresh at six level, which, no, a healer is not going to do that. Come on. And they're the only other class in the game that has stun. So you could be like, hey, I got a few extra tricks up my sleeve in case I need to. And you can still have your shoves, your odds, your loss, all your other fun stuff. You can even have your agoraphobia, your terrify. You can have all this fun stuff at six level because of dervish since it gives you options finally in the game and stun is a great option for you that is so powerful can actually change the game and especially using it on monsters is super fun now that is all your six level abilities the optimized way to play level six is well we've already kind of gone over it you either do combat caster with armor and then be like wow i have abilities that i can kind of choose from but i'm still sort of restricted and i can play the game finally or you can have Dervish and say, hey, I'm a caster now, and I can actually cast without a frequency issue while being able to play the game. I mean, I'm a full caster. I don't have armor. And while I may be able to cast a thousand spells, they're pretty much all commands. So barbarians, you're the same as monks to me, pretty much. <laughs> and that that that's really how you play level six any way you want you have the options now with dervish and legend i would highly recommend combining those together you also have the option with your combat caster and armor to customize your kit however you want do you want discorded do you want to be an inquisitor anti-mage with two points farmer you can do that do you want to be a one point jack of all trades who can keep going around singing songs and mending their armor and swinging at people while being able to do just about anything you can do that you can finally play the game and at level six you have a huge power spike which is awesome with that i hope that you have enjoyed bard and i and i know that it's been a grueling journey to get to level six it is without a doubt the hardest class to level in amp guard just because of how it's designed and you finally made it to level six i'm happy for you and i hope that you enjoy playing bard don't forget to like, subscribe, and ding that notification bell to stay updated on more AmpGuard tips. And also, we will be talking about Bard a little bit more in our next video. Not just a song video, of course, but the next video, you might want to pay attention to that. So, until next time, keep playing.